Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And we're way out in the country here. We're actually between Tandragee and Hamilton's Bond. And as you can see, it is dark. But on this side, it's actually very bright because this is a wee Christmas display, or should I say a big Christmas display. And it's to raise funds for Mary Curry cancer. So there's Santa Claus just about to take off with his, uh, his reindeers, as you can see. So, uh, and there's a couple of wee soldiers there at each side as well. And you can donate online here as well. It says, prefer to donate online. Scan this QR code on your smartphone or visit. And you can see it there, www.justgiving.com fundraising time lights. So there you go. And there's the wise men bringing their gifts. Fantastic, isn't it? it says their wise men come to Jesus, come to visit Jesus. There's another one. Some shepherds hear about Jesus. And there's the angel appearing to them. This is pretty amazing. And this is the gentleman here who is responsible for all this. What's happening here? What is... So this is a Christmas display that we have been doing at our family home here. Uh, this is the eighth year at uh, this particular property. We used to do it on a much smaller scale, mind you, uh, at our family home in Lurgan before we moved out to Tandragee. Uh -huh. um, so as you probably already said, uh, we're halfway between Tandragee and Hamilton's Bond. We decorate the garden in quite a big way. Um, and we do it uh, primarily for Marie Curie, that's who we raise funds for. This is Thank the 10th year of fundraising for them and we've raised uh, just over 38,000 I believe it is for Marie Curie in those 10 years. Um, so it's, it's, it's free to free to access and um, you come down and if you want to get out of your car you're you're able to park up at the side of the road if that's what you want to do and you're able to have a wee walk up down the drive and have a look at, at the different things that are on display. Brilliant. So we do it for Marie Curie as I've said but we also do it for the community around us, um, our, our neighbours, our, our family, our friends. Um, we also do it for the most important reason, which is the real meaning of the season. Um, so we have um, our large nativity scene over to this side. Yes. Um, and then our smaller nativity scene and our storyboards. Yes. Uh, allow the children who visit the display to, to read about the story of Jesus and how Jesus' birth came to be. Um, so that's all part of our kind of nativity trail to the main nativity scene uh, depicting Christ's birth. Yes. And then over at the far side of the garden. I'll see it says there just sorry, Christ is born. Yes, so that's that's a nice big prop that we put in two or three years ago. Um, uh-huh. And it normally does light up, but I'm doing a wee bit of maintenance in it at the minute. Um, yes. And it, it's a nice big um, still bright enough with the white, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, but it's a nice big um, addition to the display. Um, that really makes a statement of, of what we're all about and, and why we're here. And I see you have a little snowman as well there. We do, yes. Um, so over at this side of the garden, we, we've quite a variety. Um, so I heard you pointing out the, the elves and the Santa's workshop and all of that there. So we make quite an effort to uh, put different items into themed sections. So keep the snowman with the snowman and the yes. elves with the elves. Um, it just looks a lot nicer um, when they're all grouped together. So we have our, our snowman and our arctic scene, and then we have our um, Santa's workshop section. Uh -huh. And then in the middle here, um, this is um, all LED pixel technology. Fantastic. Um, and this allows us to program the lights to dance to the music. So you yes. can see those wee arches there are bouncing uh -huh. back and forth to the drum beat. Um, and then we have obviously the, uh, the singers and the harmonizers singing the actual song. Uh, so that's Noel, yes. that particular song that's playing at the minute. Um, so those lights are all programmed to music. Um, oh goodness. And that's, that's a big part of the hobby that's growing um, quite a lot. Is that right, is it? It's grown quite a lot in this last lot of years. Yes. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant uh, 
way of, of, of doing something different and so we can program that to, to any song really um, but we only program that to uh, gospel Christmas songs because obviously that's what the season is all about yes um, so we have a great big community of people who do that synchronized stuff um, oh my goodness then, um, some of our suppliers done the light show and the likes of those guys have really helped ramp up this side of the hobby in the UK. Um, and it is a hobby, really, isn't well, it? Well, it's a hobby, but really it's a full-time job for us because yeah. we start this um, in the second week of September is when we start putting this up, and every weekend thereafter, um, up until the middle of November when we switch it on. Yes. But really, the downtime in the off-season will be either sequencing new songs or maintaining lights or fixing lights that have broken weather has broke quite a few this year so we have our, our car book well filled <laughs> for the year 2024 um, so yeah um, we keep ourselves busy with you know, doing different new projects throughout the year then so it really is a, an all year round operation even though it only sort of shows itself at Christmas yeah. it is a real all, all year round um, and I'll see if you can get the trees decorated we have the trees decorated and, and those are um, uh, sort of homemade meteor lights uh, yeah. sort of shower down through the tree using the same technology as these lights here um, but they're just doing a sort of a colour wash kind of idea um, but using the same technology as, as the synchronised lights yes uh, the same idea um, just doing a nice big colour fade through that tree. and what's like the mind there what's that in mind is that is that just covering something so or what is that? Down, so down here we have you might maybe capture it a bit um, a bit more so there we have shrubs that are there all year round. Yes. Um, but we drape that snow over it to make it look like a mountain effect. So ah, I got you. Normally we would have waterfall lights coming down there uh -huh. um, and, and different penguins and stuff sliding down it. Um, but unfortunately the weather has kind of damaged those lights on us so they're out of action at the minute. But normally there'd be a bit of a waterfall coming down there and, and, and that would sort of come down over those shrubs. It just helps create a nice backdrop for the, uh, the snowmen and the... Um, Brilliant. Uh, Absolutely, I haven't seen as many snowmen, I have to say, in all and my there's life. Plen there's plenty more that I could use, but we, we think that's a taste for number. <laughs> and then actually, just now, um, this elf, this is our talking elf. So oh. He's essentially a 25 foot tall talking elf. My goodness. And he reads the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. Oh, Brian. Um, and he reads that to all the visitors um, who come round to, to see the display as well. My goodness. And what's your first name then? My first name is Tim. Tim. And this is a family uh, uh, gig that we do this. So I do it with my wife Sarah and my dad. So did you start this yourself then? Well, sort of and sort of not. So dad uh, would have had a small family sized display um, actually in our back garden uh -huh. in our previous family home where I grew up in Lurgan. Um, but it was around about the year 2011. 11, if I remember right, that there was a documentary on, on TV uh -huh. and it featured people who do big scale Christmas displays. Um, I've seen some of them on the news. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so naturally I got in touch with a few of these people, found them on Facebook and whatnot and got in touch with them and, and sort of expressed an interest to do something similar and we're very, very grateful that um, the opportunities came up to buy all the different figures so we just bought them up and bought them up as we could. Yes. And, and started then fundraising for charity we had kind of enough stuff to Let's start do it. doing it for charity mm -hmm. so it was myself that kind of turned it into a charity gig um really um off the back of that having done it uh, for years just as a wee family display for the neighbors and whatnot and um, so it was myself that turned it into the charity side um and sort of introduced all of this pixel technology and stuff like that there yes um, so I was, I was able to get over last year to, to Bristol and meet um, two brothers who were a large inspiration behind me getting into it for charity. Is that right? The, the Brailsford brothers are very, very well known in the southwest of England, so um, huh, I, guess. I was able to get over and meet them and see their display in person. And then with a number of items that are kind of uh, from various different displays over the year that have been donated to us and gifted to us. Yes. And displays that have retired and whatnot. And then to run all of this, because that's the question that people often ask, um, you get people coming at it from two different points of view. You get people coming at it from an environmental point of view. Well, 
98% of this is all LED, um, so mm -hmm. it doesn't have that much of an impact. And certainly the amount that you're raising for the charity certainly offsets any impact you would be having in running a uh, Christmas display. And with it also being LED, um, it, it keeps the running costs down. Um, and we're very, very grateful to have um, many. Uh, I think we've uh, 18 this year, I think off the top of my head. Uh, local businesses who contribute uh, right. 